100 days in a void only world now i do a lot of hardcore challenges on my channel and one of the top requested videos is to try to beat minecraft in a void only world now you also might be wondering is it even possible well yeah all you really got to do is turn structures on but i decided to spice it up a bit so i had a custom world made which i'll have linked down in the description below that will make it so all structures spawn in minecraft so will i survive the 100 days or will i fall in the void stay tuned to find out and if you go on to enjoy this Hold on, hold on, before we get into this video though, real quick. As most of you guys know, I've actually, I've been partnered up with uh, GamerSubs for quite some time. And I, I freaking love these guys. We even did a collaboration, a Paul GG Shaker Cup. Now, I mean, this thing's currently not available, but that's that's okay because we're working on something big. And by big, I mean a 24 ounce Paul GG inspired Shaker Cup. And at the time of this video's release, I would have tweeted saying that we want you guys to design this Paul GG inspired 24 ounce Shaker Cup. But that's not all guys. We're also giving away 1500 sample packs of gamer subs. That is a lot of sample packs. All you gotta do is use code PaulGG at checkout, no credit card needed, nothing. And for those of you guys who don't know what gamer subs is, it is an amazingly delicious, organic, keto-friendly energy drink that's actually just, it's full of vitamins. And honestly, I freaking love this stuff. So go use the link down below in my description, guys. Get yourself some gamer subs. Use code PaulGG at checkout to get some free shipping. And let's get on to the rest of the video. Day one, since we're luckily starting out at a village, the first thing I would naturally do is just gather some resources. So I started dismantling the house I spawned on. Also, surprisingly, there was a villager kid that survived inside the house. But while I was destroying the house, he, he must he must have fallen or something. I don't know where he went. Anyways, with all the materials I was able to get, I can now make some slabs so that I could use them to get around. And after tearing down the first couple of houses, I made my way over to a blast furnace house. Now, I'm not sure what kind of ores I'm gonna be cooking in this thing, but anything in the void world, could probably honestly just be useful. I also found out that there was a blacksmith in town, which is gonna be super useful later on for lava and some of the iron tools and armor inside the chest. I pretty much just spent the remainder of the day making my way over to the villager brew house because I'm definitely gonna be needing a lot of cobblestone. Day two, I began tearing down the cobblestone house, but then I realized that food's gonna be an issue in this series. So, my, so I made my way over to a house that I knew would have chests. Wow, look at all them apples. This is where I had the bright idea bright idea uh <clears throat> to try to bridge out over to the shipwreck now at the time it didn't look that far away that is until bridging halfway out and using stacks of slabs that's when i realized this thing's a lot farther than i thought but i was already too committed and used too many slabs so you already know i was gonna get over to that boat and finally after making it all the way over there i looted it got a map and the yep, no that looks like a void i also managed to get some armor and some suspicious stew and the last chest had a tiny bit of iron and gold was it worth spending all the resources getting out here probably not day three i continued breaking down a bunch of houses and tried to get as much materials as possible because if i thought that boat was far i didn't even want to imagine what the next village was going to be like but i also found another villager i wanted to make sure he wasn't going to fall out like the kid did so i placed a bunch of slabs inside the house so he got a, he's got enough room to you know stretch his legs and walk around don't worry i'll come back for you with all these materials i've gathered it's finally time to start heading out there was only one other village i was able to see out in the distance so i pretty much just spent the remainder of the day bridging all the way out to it but it was totally worth it because once i got to the village i was able to see three other villages so i knew i was going to definitely want to live somewhere nearby since this area had a lot of opportunity for stonks day four i decided to start bridging out to the nearest village because i noticed there was a tree in the middle of town i was hoping that maybe just maybe i would be able to get a dirt block because even with one dirt block that would just be game changing for this series honestly i have no idea how i'm even going to get any dirt but after bridging all the way out alas there was no dirt block but i did find something amazing a giant desert temple after seeing this thing i knew it was fit for a king it's close enough to all the villages and i'd be able to look down on everyone from my perch but i also had to gather a lot of materials because i'm running a little dry i'm trying not to completely decimate all the houses in the villages because i'm planning on building them back up but honestly eh, maybe i just worry about that later while making my while making my way through the village i also found some water in a cauldron at the leather worker's house this is gonna be huge for later builds day five it was time to finally start bridging all the way over to what could be our new home one of the best things about this thing is also that it's gonna have a bunch of loot in it or 
it's just gonna completely explode and I'm not gonna get any of the loot. But regardless, I've mined a staircase all the way to the top of this thing. And on the way up, all I can hear is mobs spawning in the new blown up cave. So that's gonna be great having to deal with that later. <laughs> After making it to the top, I noticed there were some freeloaders living inside. So I quickly crafted up a shield and began cleaning out the house. I had to be very careful though, because there was some creepers. And I'm not trying to get blown off the edge and destroy my new house. After some close calls, I managed to handle all the mobs and claim this place as my home. Day six, I decided to start working on the temple, figuring out all the areas I could expand and create some more rooms. One of these days, I'll probably convert all this sandstone into some much cooler blocks. But for now, I'm gonna have to live with the setup. Day seven, I figured I'd try to get stocked up with how much... Day seven, I figured I'd try to get stocked up with as much wood as possible now, since I wasn't going to be getting any trees anytime soon. So I made my way all the way over to Nuketown. I just decided on that name for Spawn Village, because I'm pretty much just going to be using this village to destroy everything and gather as much wood as possible. But because it's so far away, I spent almost half the day just running all the way there. So I didn't really have too much time to be able to get materials. But what I did do was risk my life to waterfall down and get a composter for some future jobs. Oh yeah, and I also found a stone cutter. Day eight through nine, I pretty much just spent the entire time trying to gather wood and cobblestone so not not too much to talk about here day 10 it was time to run home but home's also really far and it takes too long to get there but after making my way all the way home i found some smelly boys that moved into my house so i did what anyone else would do and i clapped their cheeks afterwards this time i made sure to light up the living room with plenty of torches and i opened up a window just in time for sunset day 11 after all that running i decided to take a break from adventuring and work on the house a bit more i decided to create some more rooms and make a kitchen for all my smelting and since my inventory is getting pretty full i also dumped a bunch of stuff in some new chests otherwise it was a pretty relaxing day and i needed that because on day 12 it's time to deal with all the mobs in the basement i went down the stairs until the mobs were screaming in my ears and i couldn't even hear myself think i started mining my way towards them but i completely missed them and i uh, somehow i was too low or too high and i was just kind of mindlessly swinging around my pickaxe and the wall and then i decided to go up a bit more and then i found the perfect entry point i don't know why i thought at the time that they would be a good idea to try to get all the mobs to funnel in to a tiny hole so then I could clap all of them. All I knew was that eventually I wanted to turn this thing into a mob grinder. But to do that, I'd have to take care of all the mobs that are currently in there right now. After smacking them around for a little bit, I gave up because the strategy was clearly not going to work. But I wasn't going to give up because on day 13, I decided to run all the way back to Nuketown because I remembered that there was a blacksmith that had lava. And I had the bright idea of trying to drop lava on their heads and burn all the mobs that I can. And I'm going to be needing lava anyways for some future projects. So it was worth the run so by the time i got all the way back home the sun was setting and i still had enough time to dump the lava on their heads if this doesn't get those freeloaders to leave i don't know what will day 14 it was time to run down there and see if the lava worked which it seems like it helps a little bit with preventing new mobs from spawning with all the light but it completely missed everyone and did absolutely no damage luckily i was able to clap all the stragglers that were just kind of funneling back into the hole and i spent the remainder of the day placing torches everywhere so that mobs won't spawn and then i also repaired all the damage i caused Day 15 to 18, I spent clearing out the entire room and shaping it into a giant square so that I could build a mob grinder. Usually making mob grinders don't take too long, but because of the fact that I had to break so many blocks just to be able to shape it and then also place a bunch of blocks, the process just took forever. But it was definitely worth it because once I had everything cleared out, the layout was perfect. I laid down everything for the format of the mob grinder and placed down a bunch of slabs for the roof so mobs won't be spawning on top of this thing. Everything was going great, that is, until I started working a little too late on day 18. While on my way up the stairs to go to bed i was ambushed by a bunch of bony boys trying to get frisky after i gave them the hands i was surprised by a creeper that snuck up on me in the kitchen i was also not recording at the time but as you can tell by all the aftermath it wasn't a good time worst part was that i couldn't even go to sleep because there was too many mobs on the roof so i had to go outside and take care of them and i had a few close calls but i managed to flex my dominance and reclaim my home by that i mean i was finally able to sleep and i woke up to everyone burning on day 19. well that is until i remember that there was creepers doing creepy things out there and i wasn't gonna let these guys sneak up on me again so i made sure to be careful this time by slapping them and then slamming the door in their face but after officially getting rid of them i realized i was gonna need an infinite water pool for the mob grinder so i was gonna need to get another bucket of lava which luckily on my way over to the nearby villages had another leather worker i spotted a little witch's hut well by that i mean it's hard to miss it was right in the middle of town but either way witch's huts have cauldrons so i built my way over to get in position to be able to clap this beast then i was spotted she eat a slowness potion out the window but like always i gave her the hands no problem but then i did have a problem the cauldron was empty which means i was gonna have to 
run all the way to the next village with slowness. But eventually, after finally making it there, I immediately spotted the building I was looking for, built my way over to it, and scooped up the water I needed. And then I managed to make it all the way back home just in time for sunset. But I also had some more mobs in the house again because after the creeper blew up all the torches. So I cleaned it all up and got them out and placed some new torches right before going to bed. Day 20, now that I got the two water buckets, I was able to make an infinite water pool so I could finally finish up this mob grinder. After getting all the water flowing, I had to mine all the way down far enough so that all the mobs can take just enough fall damage but not die. So I wanted to be able to use this thing as an XP farmer also. But I was also gonna have to make a new entrance to be able to get to the mob grinder. So after mining all the way down, I figured it the easiest way to do it would just be mining all the way out and then creating a new pathway along the outside wall. But otherwise, it's time to turn the lights out on this thing and close it all up. Day 21, it's time to go down there and see how it's doing. Just based off of how terrifying it sounds going all the way down the staircase, it seems like it's working pretty well. When I got down there, it was actually overflowing with all the mobs. So I'll mark this huge project down as a big W. Pretty much for the remainder of the day, I just sat there smacking around at the mob grinder and working on the staircase. Day 22, I'm running a bit low on food again. So it's time to go out and start scavenging all the chests I could find in all the villages. I wanted to start breeding villagers sometime soon but i wasn't gonna be able to do that if even i can't get any food you guys already know i'm not gonna be sharing if you know i mean if food's low and it, yeah, it was kind of cringy maybe i don't do that one but i do have a genius plan to start getting a few of them to multiply so that i can be able to get a farmer so then i can be able to buy bread and then breed more villagers but for now i'm just a scavenger i went to all the villages that i'm currently connected to and looted all the chests that would possibly have some food in it day 23 it's time to make that cobblestone generator i was talking about earlier i figured i would make it indoors so i could just mindlessly punch it without being bothered by any mobs so that's exactly what i did i afk farmed at this cobblestone generator generator for the rest of day 23. Day 24. Now that we have plenty of cobblestone, I wanted to try to create a large platform in the home village so that I can start breeding all those villagers. And then they could just be free range and roam around. But fill in this giant village, is, it's gonna take some serious time and a lot of cobblestone. So after expanding a little bit, it was time to clean the place up. Started off by getting rid of that nasty witch's hut. And unfortunately, since the void is only one block below the houses, I'm gonna have to do some remodeling on all these villager homes and try to bring them all up one block. Since I can't really get underneath them to make a platform day 25 luckily i have one villager that survived in this town but it takes two to tango so i was hoping to find another one trapped inside of one of the houses nearby but unfortunately that wasn't the case so i was going to need to travel all the way to the neighboring village just so that i can move a villager that's stranded on the well but like always when dealing with villagers it's just never easy i had to constantly widen the platform in some areas so that i can boat him all the way over i also had to make sure that i wasn't going to fall off during the process but after a sketchy ride, we managed to make it back just in time for the sunset. Day 26, I started off the day by finishing up the villager move. Larry, the leather worker, was super excited to have a new roommate. So excited, he actually jumped in the boat with the newbie. So I figured since things are clearly moving along quickly, I might as well give them some bread and see what happens. After I returned home because I'm starving and I'm really low on food still, so clearly I'm going to need a bridge out to another village nearby to be able to hopefully get some food. But for that, I was going to need some more cobblestone. So I AFK farm for the rest of the day. Day 27, adventure time. Well, that's after I clean out the mob grinder, of course. Okay, now it's adventure time. I keep eyeing a village not too far away from the backside of the temple. I figured since it's the closest village, that's gonna be my target to pillage. After making a platform bridge all the way around the temple and then all the way out to the new village, it looked like this village wasn't gonna offer up much food. Luckily, after arriving, I was able to see another village not too far away. So after getting all the food in this lame village, it was time to move on to the next. And while approaching this new village, I knew it was gonna be a good one. They had like three houses I I knew it would have chests in them and they even had a smoker so i could be able to cook up all the food that i don't have but shortly after arriving it was sunset and so it was time to take a nap but on day 28 i finished pillaging the town for all that's worth and i managed to get a lot of bread and potatoes and even some more emeralds before heading all the way home 
Today was definitely a good day for pillaging. After arriving back at home, I went straight to feeding my villagers. Turns out they already had a baby. So, oper so Operation Repopulate This World is off to a great start. And since we're gonna have some kids running around, I figured I'd try to baby-proof this village a little bit. I don't want any of them going missing on me. And at the end of the day, on my way home, I heard a chicken jockey in the mob grinder. That got me super excited. I was able to finally have some chickens. So after taking the baby zombie off my little chicken, I was worried that he might despawn. So I ran all the way up to the top of the temple to get some wood for a boat. And then when I got back, the chicken was gone. <sighs> I don't know why everyone says that passive mobs don't despawn when they clearly do. Day 29, I spent the entire day just punching cobblestone and sulking in my sadness. Day 30, I gathered a bunch of food and some beds so that I could start finally expanding my village. That is until I fi that is until I finally got tired of smacking my forehead against every single block while going down the staircase at home. So I figured if I'm going to keep going all the way up and down this thing, I might as well expand it and make it more efficient. So I spent half the day pretty much just working on that. When I finished, there was a nice giant pile of mobs patiently waiting for me in the grinder. So after clapping all their cheeks, it was finally time to feed my villagers. Once this village is fully up and running, life's going to get so so much easier. Day 31, it was time to finally start solving this food problem. I grabbed my composter and all the emeralds I had and turned one of my villagers into a farmer. This way I'll always have some food and enough scraps for the villagers to get by. Afterwards, I decided to chop down the only tree I've seen in this entire world. But it was within hopes to be able to finally get some more saplings. But while waiting for the leaves to decay, I was jumped by a bunch of slimes. But after giving them the hands, I finished out the day by expanding the bridge that connects all the way home. Day 32, I felt like doing a bit of adventuring in hopes of being able to find some obsidian or at least some lava from blacksmith so I could finally make another portal. But luckily, in the village not too far away from home, I was able to see a blacksmith out in the distance. And after bridging all the way over, surprisingly, it actually did have obsidians and diamonds inside. We finally got our first pair of diamonds. Afterwards, I, of course, pillaged this village for anything of value, which basically just ended up being a smithing table. So nothing too special. Day 33, we're back at home and it's finally time to make that nether portal. I decided to carve out a room in the bottom of the pyramid palace where I could be able to decorate it and make it look a little swanky later on. And after grabbing some lava to light this nether portal, I almost got jumped by a creeper. But your boy isn't ready to die yet, so of course I gave him the hands. Now the next hurdle I'm going to have to get over is to be able to light this portal actually without flint and steel. So I'm going to have to do this the old-fashioned way with putting a couple logs and... Uh, oh, all right. Well, it's lit already, I guess. I spent the next two days in the nether in hopes of being able to find a fortress. But immediately after going through the portal, I did find a bastion. And since I have little to no gear at the moment and those piglin brutes hit like a truck, yeah, I think I'll pass for now. But luckily on day 35, I did manage to finally find a fortress. I didn't want to spend too much time in here, but what I did know is that I wanted to loot all the chests because we managed to get some of those sweet, beautiful diamonds. And also while roaming the halls in the nether fortress trying to find chests, I slayed a wither skelly and, and got a wither skull on my first try. I mean, uh, I mean, I'll, I'll take it. And after looting the fortress, it was finally time to leave, but not without getting some blaze rods. I'm not gonna lie, it was, it was a little rough. We had some close calls, but we managed and I got some blaze rods and we left. Day 36, we're back at home. I'm getting pretty tired of this staircase going all the way up and down at the base. So I decided to make a water elevator. But at the time, I didn't realize that there's no way for me to get kelp. So yeah. Anyways, I began expanding a giant platform at the bottom of the base so I could create kind of like a workstation area. Now I'm trying to make it sound like there's more of a purpose, but in reality, I just wanted the elevator to look cool. I also realized since I have a small brain, I actually plugged up my infinite water source while building the mob grinder. So I couldn't even finish making the water elevator and until I grab some more water from a village nearby. But after the long run, the deed was done. Day 37, ah uh, yeah. This is when I realized that I wasn't gonna be able to get kelp for the elevator. So like any normal person, I took out my frustration on the mob grinder. Man, I really need to make hoppers for this thing. And so that's actually what my next big goal is be able to make an iron farm so I could finally have a consistent flow of iron coming in. So I made my way over to the home village and I created a Fletcher with some of the flint that I got in the nether. And so I sold him some sticks so that I could buy some more bread and breed more villagers. But then I got a little bit impatient and decided to take one anyways. But like always, when dealing with villagers, it just it just takes forever. I had to boat him all the way home. And I had to do it while racing the sun too, because that thing was setting. But luckily we made it. Now day 38, it was finally time to start making the platform for the iron farm. I decided to make it closer to home since this is pretty much where I spend most of my time. So it'll probably be the most effective 
over here. But after building the platform, I realized I was going to need some iron to make hoppers. So I made my way back through the home village so that I can bridge all the way out to a boat that I've been eyeing for a while. Usually these sunken ships have a lot of iron in them. So I figured this would be the best place to start. After bridging all the way out, there was no surprise that there was 10 ingots in that thing waiting for me. I also realized that this was a full ship too, which could make for a pretty cool build later on. But for now, I was going to have to get some more cobblestone back at home because I completely burned through my cobblestone supply. So I pretty much spent all of day 39 just punching some rocks. Day 40, after going back to the boat, I realized that there was another village nearby that actually had two blacksmiths in it. So I quickly bridged over. This is going to be huge because this might actually be the last bit of the iron that I'm going to need for the farm, which unfortunately, the first blacksmith only had one iron, but it did have a diamond, so that's pretty nice. And the second blacksmith did have a couple more ingots in it, so we should be in the clear to start building this iron farm. And so that's exactly what I did on day 41. I spent the next two days building this farm. I have built this thing in the past on my 100 Ocean Days series, and I'll have a link to a tutorial down below. It's pretty easy and straightforward, that, that is until you have to start dealing with villagers. Because on day 42, I had to start building a staircase all the way up just for my first villagers just to climb in, since I don't have any rails right now. Luckily, the strategy of promising a good job never fails. After trapping one sucker in this thing, it was time to kidnap another. I boated another villager all the way home and took him all the way up to the top of the farm as well. And so I tossed some more bread in there so they could start multiplying so I don't have to take any more villagers up here. And with everyone in position, I was able to finally put the finishing touches on this farm. But while waiting for the villagers to do some baby making, I figured I'd get ahead of the curve and spend the rest of day 42 punching some cobblestone. Day 44, I started off by cleaning out the mob grinder. And we're already at level 50, and I haven't even made an enchantment table. Man, it's been a relaxing series. Afterwards, I checked out my villagers just to see if they spawned the last villager baby that I would need for this farm. But while doing it, I got distracted by something and accidentally AFK'd at the top of the farmer. Luckily, I made it back just in time for sunset because that could have ended terribly. Day 45, I started off by heading into town to sell some sticks so that I could get some more bread because I think my villagers are just running out of the baby making juice. So after giving them some bread, I was confident that they'd get the job done. So I closed the hatch on them and cleaned up the farm a little bit and decided to smack the mob grinder while patiently waiting. And it wasn't too long until we got our first iron golem that spawned. Finally, we finally, eh, we finally got an endless supply of iron coming in. On day 46, I decided it was finally time to make a forest. And you might be wondering, well, how are you going to do that? Well, I'm going to go into the nether, of course. But that's when I got jumped by a bunch of creepers. Those things were just everywhere. I don't know where the heck they were coming from. I almost got knocked in the lava. But thankfully, after surviving that surprise attack, the next thing on the list was I was going to have to find a warp forest, which luckily I was able to spot one not too far away from the portal and on the way over there i noticed there was actually a fortress that's even closer than the other one that i found but i was going to need a warp forest because endermen pick up that nasty nether grass looking stuff so then i don't even need silk touch i just need him to pick it up so that i could clap his cheeks i was really hoping to find an enderman that was holding some of that blue grass because i think it looks way better than crimson but the first enderman did me dirty and he gave me the one thing i said i didn't want so i wanted to wait for another enderman to pick up another grass block but i got pretty impatient decided to go try to loot the fortress nearby but after getting to the fortress i realized that i've been inhaling all my food <laughs> so i basically have nothing left so i kind of just chickened out and started heading back home and of course while passing through the warped forest again there wasn't a single enderman holding some of that good blue stuff day 47 we're back at home and it's time to build the platform for our new forest but i kind of had a small brain moment when building the giant circle and uh, i accidentally placed down the only grass block i have but then i had a big brain moment and i realized that all i got to do is place another netherrack block next to it and bone meal it and then boom problem solve big w's in the comments section boys i was also able to luckily finish out the entire day by growing a bunch of trees mm. with all this uh talking i'm getting a little thirsty and drink some some gamer stuff so Mm. Day 48. I decided to head all the way into town to turn one of my villagers into a brew boy so that I could finally start selling all that rotten flesh I've been getting from the mob grinder. Problem is that I forgot all the rotten flesh at home. So after running all the way back home and grabbing it and then coming all the way back, I managed to make some decent stonks so I could, buy, so I could be able to finally buy some more bread and have a decent meal. Day 49. I decided that since I'm already level 56 and I haven't done a single enchant, I should probably explore some villages that I've already bridged to and try to find 
a lectern house so I could steal some of that knowledge. But after running around for an entire day, the only thing that I saw that was decent was a raid tower that could be pretty fun later on. Day 50, I started off the day by crafting a full suit of iron armor. It's taken forever to get... <laughs> it's taken forever just to get to this point to be able to finally make an actual suit of iron armor. <sighs> Oh, it's just, it feels so good. It's just the little things. Afterwards, I decided the easiest way for me to get bookshelves is for me to just find the stronghold. But to do that, I was gonna need to get an ender pearl so that I could be able to craft my first ender eye. Luckily, I got an ender pearl for my first enderman in the nether, but every enderman I clapped afterwards, just they just wouldn't give me one. Yeah, it doesn't really matter because we're in a void world and I only really need one anyways. Day 51, I made my way over to the village since that's kind of just the biggest surface area and I'm gonna make sure that I don't lose the only eye I got. Wait, did... Did it just break? All right, well, I, all right. That's okay, I guess, because uh, now I know the direction. <laughs> I traveled as far as I could before I had to start bridging out. I was able to see a couple villages and what I'm assuming is going to be another giant desert temple. Tep, temp, tep, temple. So I began bridging and bridging and then I slept. And then on day 52, I continued bridging. I bridged so hard that I had to run all the way home just to get more cobblestone. I went through my entire cobblestone supply. So on day 53, I was back at the cobblestone generator. I was going to make sure that I had enough materials to finish out this bridge. So I AFK farmed for pretty much the entire day. Day 54, it's time to get back to bridge simulator but while taking a quick break from my pinky to recover i actually saw the stronghold on the other side of the village so the break time was over i quickly made my way into the village and rushed through it to the other side just in time for sunset day 55 i bridged all the way out to the stronghold and went straight to the library honestly the void worlds are just it's just so emotionally draining things look like they're so close but then they're not and then you start bridging and then it takes forever Anyways, finally, after arriving at the stronghold, I quickly rushed to the library and started stealing all the knowledge I could. And after getting all the books that I was going to need, I figured I might as well make a platform that goes straight into the portal room so that I could also destroy the silverfish spawner so I got a safe path to get in there later. And on my way out of the stronghold, I remembered that there was chests inside the library. Usually these have pretty dookie loot in them, but this time I actually got a fortune 2 book and a protection book. And on day 56, it's time to begin the insanely long run home. All the way home. I seriously can't can't believe I actually made all these bridges. When I finally got home, I finished out the day by looting the iron farm and then making our enchantment table. I wanted to try to make it look pretty swanky, like a little corner shape, but that's just not really how it works. You need a certain amount of bookshelf. It just, it didn't work out. So then I used all my wood just to be able to even make the enchantment table. And then the first thing that I enchanted was of course a diamond pickaxe. And to my surprise, I actually already got looting on it. Day 57. And since I used all my wood on those bookshelves, I pretty much just spent the entire day working on the tree farm. I got a pretty good workflow going where the tree will only grow to the height that I can reach. So it kind of just worked out perfectly. But after a little while it started turning into a giant weird rectangle thing eh, i'll deal with that some other time day 58 i started out the day by making an anvil and using the enchantment books i got from the stronghold i'm sure a lot of people are gonna get triggered that i'm enchanting iron armor but come on i'm in a void world by the time i get enough diamonds just to be able to make a full suit of armor i'll probably be like level 500 or something yeah enough with the rant buckle up because you're about to see one of the smallest brain moments of this entire series i made my way over to the village with a lot of sticks in hopes of being able to make a lot of emeralds so that I could level up my farmer so that then I could be able to buy apples off of him. But little did I know the pumpkin pies he's selling me is actually what replaces the apples that he would be selling. So basically I wasted the entire day just trying to level him up because on day 59, I realized I already had a ton of apples in my food chest at home. Yep, yeah, like I said, it was a small brain moment. But I mainly just wanted a few golden apples before going into the nether because I was gonna try to loot all the gold from a bastion so I could be able to do some piglin trades and get some pearls. That is if I could actually survive getting jumped while going through the portal every single time. I definitely need to add some more light in the portal room or something. It's just, uh, yeah, that's not working. Oh, but also be... <laughs> But also before going to the bastion, I realized I wasn't wearing any of that bling bling. So I had to quickly grab some gold and make a helmet. Now, luckily I know where all the gold is inside this bastion. The only thing I need to worry about is lava and piglin brutes. But honestly, it wasn't too much of an issue. And I kind of just took all the gold and went outside and started doing some trades. And it wasn't even too long after that before I got all the pearls that I was gonna need for the end portal. Day 60 after returning from my nether adventures, I realized that I didn't have all the blaze rods I thought I had. So back in the nether we go. I ran all the way over to the fortress, ran up and down every single hallway, looting all the chests, trying to find blaze spawners, and it just, it just took forever. But I finally managed to find one. I was definitely convinced that this fortress only had one spawner, but it didn't matter. After clapping all the blazy cheeks, it was time to head back home. Day 61, I began the journey all the way over to the stronghold. Jesus, this run takes forever. But today's the day I was going to clap the ender dragon.
And honestly, I'd, I'd like to say it was an epic battle, but in reality, the dragon had zero chance. I mean, let's be real here. So after a relatively anticlimactic fight with the dragon, it's time to get on to my true goal, which is getting the elytra. And on day 61, I began my journey all the way... Oh no, I almost just repeated myself. And on day 62 to 64, it was time to get that elytra. Now in the ocean only series, I was in the end for days trying to find an end city. I figured there's no way that that's going to happen again, right? Right? And well, it didn't, because after bumping my view distance all the way up, I was able to see a couple end cities way out in the distance. The only thing is that things look a lot closer than it actually is. It was a really long journey, and I made the best of it. After arriving at the ship, the task of climbing all the way up to get the elytra just got a lot harder, because the ship's also floating over the void. One wrong step and your boy's done. But I'm honestly not that bad, so we're fine. I jumped in and clapped the bouncers and grabbed my elytra. And of course, I grabbed all the diamond gear that's inside the chest also. Afterwards, I gave some shulkers some hands, then I went and grabbed the ender dragon. Okay, moving on. After robbing the ship, I figured I'd go in the end city and get a bunch of loot and shulker shells so that I'd be able to make shulker boxes later. Why is that such a weird word to say? Shulk, shulk, shulker. After getting all the shulker shells that I was going to need, it was time to head home. But that's when I remembered that I still need to get the ender dragon egg. After making a teleport, I thought I thought it just completely disappeared. I, I couldn't find that thing. But I just got debated because it was hiding from me. I got it. On day 65, I started off the day by crafting my shulker boxes. These things are going to be great when traveling around the world. I also even made a brand new swanky diamond sword. And afterwards, I crafted a bunch of rockets because it's adventure time, baby. I wanted to fly around in hopes of being able to find some more lapis lazuli so that I could be able to enchant my sword. But I also just wanted a reason just to fly around and use the elytra because I'm just never gonna have to bridge again. But after a long day of flying and looting, it's time to head home. On day 66, I tabbed out to Google something and got, got pretty distracted. And I was watching a Cookie God's new 300 day video. So I mean, that's pretty neat. It was a pretty productive day, I could say. Day 67, it's finally time to enchant my diamond sword. But because max level enchantments cost so much lapis, I only had room for one level 30 enchantment. And it ended up being kind of dookie. Afterwards, I crafted a lectern so I could fly into town and turn one of my villagers into a book boy in hopes of being able to get them to sell me mending. But like always with villagers, it just takes forever. But luckily at the end of the day, they finally came around and given me what I wanted. But I forgot mending's also a super expensive book. So on day 68, I decided to clean out the mob grinder to try to get as much rotten flesh as I could to sell. I also grabbed the rest of my wood to turn into sticks and made my way back into town. But after selling all the stuff, I still was just a broke boy. So I figured since I'm going to be rebuilding this village later anyways, I'm going to need a lot of oak wood any anyways. Any, any All right, moving on. I might as well just go steal it from the neighboring village. And now that I got enough sticks to sell, I can finally buy that mending book. That is after I fly home and grab a book so that I can actually buy it. But finally, after all those trades, I rushed home and slapped some mending on my elytra. That's when I realized I could have used on the enchantment table first and then added the book later uh oh well day 69 <laughs> Nice. I started off the day by smacking the mob grinder. Honestly, I love how effective this thing is, but I want it to be even more effective. I decided to finally set up some hoppers for this thing since, you know, I got that endless iron supply coming in. So I chopped down a couple trees, made some chests. That's when I heard a skeleton somewhere in my house. I was looking everywhere for this guy. I couldn't find him. It was like I was playing an annoying game of hide and seek. He just kept taunting me with his bony noises. <laughs> but eventually I found him hiding behind the bookshelves and ain't nobody squatting in my house. Now that that's taken care of i also made like a little room over here that, that you know i'll be able to use for brewing and stuff like that afterwards i went downstairs to set up my hoppers and chest so that i could start clapping all these mobs without having to clean up after myself that is until on day 70 when i ironically started cleaning up after myself i put hardly any effort into sorting my chest and organizing so i decided it's about time i make some chest and clean everything up day 71 to 72 i decided it was time for some exploration so i spent the next two days just flying around stopping at jungle temples villages and desert temples my goal was to hopefully find enough diamonds so i could finally have a full suit of diamond armor and to no sup no surprise the desert temples are just the most superior because that's where i found most of my diamonds definitely not biased because i live in one but after all that looting i got home at the end of day 72 and crafted up my new beautiful suit of diamond armor and i also enchanted and honestly i got terrible enchants but hey i'll take it day 73 i wanted to go tnt mining in the nether with all that tnt i got from those desert temples then i had the realization that I was leaving behind tons of sand at those temples, which I actually needed so that I could be able to then craft more TNT. So I healed up the 
elytra at the mob grinder and flew to a bunch of temples again but this time i wasn't going to stop anywhere else but desert temples i wanted to make sure that i wasn't going to be wasting too much time day 74 i grabbed all my newly acquired sand and a bunch of gunpowder so that i could craft all that tnt afterwards i flew down to the village and stocked up on bread since i might be gone for a few days and then i hopped into the nether portal where i was greeted oh hold on type up there we go. Where I was greeted by a band of ravenous pigs. Honestly, they just couldn't respect my drip. <laughs> but seriously, I can't believe I actually forgot to come here without gold. But the worst part is that my shield broke. And these guys put up a good fight, but luckily I managed to survive and clapped all of them. But I did return back to the overworld with a mildly bruised ego. But day 75 through 77. I was back in the nether and I wasn't going to leave until I had enough ancient debris so that I could be able to make a full suit of armor just completely out of netherite. But to be able to do that, I was going to need 16 ancient debris, which is... It's a decent bit. I've always said that I preferred using TNT for ancient debris mining because you're able to just mine a long tunnel and then you just light some TNT and it does all the work for you. The first tunnel I made, I managed to actually get six ancient debris out of it. And then in the second tunnel, I only got three. So that was kind of depressing. But on the third tunnel where I used all the last of my TNT, I got five, which meant I need two more. Why does this feel kind of like Dora the Explorer? Can you see the ancient debris? Well, like I said, I wasn't going to leave until I got all the ancient debris I needed. And since I only needed two more, I figured I'd just mindlessly swing my pickaxe until what what okay well i mean that was fast i got the last two i needed well all right then it's time to head home on day 78 i smelted down all the ancient debris and made my netherite ingots then i crafted up a smithing table and started hold on then I crafted up a smithing table and turned all my armor into netherite. Dang, I look so good. Afterwards, I flew down to the village because I was going to need another mending book for the next massive project I'm working on. So I brought some gold with me, sold it to my brew boy so I could be able to get money to buy the book. Then flew back home and put that mending book on my pickaxe. Because for the next four days, I was going to try to AFK farm at the cobblestone generator and occasionally run down to heal my pickaxe. That is until I came back to my computer to find myself mindlessly just standing there. My cat Mochi must have hit my mouse or something. Thing. So four days of mining actually turned into three, but I still managed to get a lot of cobblestone. In day 83 to 100, to send off this series like every other 100 days, I wanted to build something epic. So I spent the last 17 days just completely rebuilding the entire home village so that all my villagers can freely run around and hopefully spawn enough iron golems because slimes are getting really annoying. Honestly, there were some other things I wanted to get done before the end of this 100 days, but all the slimes made rebuilding this village just so impossible. For the first handful of days, I was focusing on trying to expand the the entire platform to each of the houses that I didn't destroy early on. For all the houses that did get destroyed, though, I pretty much just recycled all those materials later on to build Paul GG custom villager homes. But honestly, building this giant platform was the most tedious and difficult thing I've done in a while. These slimes were just so relentless. I was working in constant fear that they would just sneak up behind me and eventually just yeet me off the edge and into the void. But eventually, after finishing that giant platform, I started working on all the houses that were still usable, that is. I basically just had to raise them all up one by block. So they still look like villager homes, just a little bit shorter. But after doing this, it really started looking like a village again. But then after adjusting all the homes, I had to fly to a nearby village to tear down all the homes so I can gather materials to make homes in the village that matters. After decimating the nearby village, I began constructing those Paul GG custom homes. If you're interested in moving in, don't. Honestly, this project was a ton of work. <laughs> But I do think it's going to help my sanity while surviving in this world. And on that note, guys, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you drop a like on it. Leave a comment down below if you'd like to see another 100 days. And as always, guys, I'll see you in the next one. And if you guys are going to be clicking off this video, you better be clicking on that gamer subs link down below. Because like I said, guys, it's keto friendly for those low carb ketogenic diets. It's got zero calories for healthier consumptions. It's got nootropics to sharpen your focus and increase your reaction time. Zero sugar for healthier intake and avoid crashing so you don't get those slugs sluggish feeling like you do when you drink like soda and stuff like that. It's got organic caffeine to maximize energy and endurance. There's also no fillers, so it's none of that nasty crap. This stuff's actually got nutritional value. Like for example, it's made up of six of the most crucial minerals and vitamins that your body needs. Not to mention that literally one tub of this, it, it's 35 cents per serving. And this is a hundred servings in this thing. 100 servings in a tub, guys. That is actually so affordable. So again, guys, don't wait. Click the link down below. You guys are going to love it. Trust me. Use code Paul GG at checkout, get free shipping. And don't forget, if you guys want to partake in creating that design for the Shaker Cup, make sure you guys tweet at us using the hashtag on the tweet. But for now, guys, I'll see you in the next one.